All right, we're live, I think. I think we're live. Hooray! Well, it's exciting. Pe can people hear John? I've never had a guest on, besides one time I had David on, but that was it. Oh, oh hey, friends. Oh, hey, friends. How's it going? Oh, hey, Liz. Hey, hey. We got some follows already. Dahudi, last one here. We're going to get so many followers because you're probably tweeting. John Galloway, world famous, renowned. I don't even know how. You, I, don't, I don't know what is your background, John. What is? What, why, how did you become uh, the in internet fame that you are? I don't understand. I I don't even know. I don't know. Um. Yeah. I don't know. Um. I've been doing ASP uh, ASP.NET stuff for a while. Um. I have written some books. I have been surprised. I did some uh, MVAs, Microsoft Virtual Academies. Mm -hmm. And I am surprised how many people that has reached over the years. When I was doing them, I'm like, oh, this is kind of neat. And then now when I travel and speak at a conference, I was over in like Russia and somebody's like, hey, I watched all your MVAs. I'm like, I didn't even know like they came all the way over here. So that's super yeah. cool. So, I think, yeah. like, I think like honestly, when I think of like how Hanselman has like so many followers, you have so many followers, it's sort of like you've been doing it for like a, a long time in this community. And I feel like, I kind of came into the community a little bit later on, right? And I was mm -hmm. I was developer and I wasn't very active, especially in the beginning of Twitter. And I think like the it, it's a trickle of of that, but I think that MVA content it's overlooked because when I was talking to um, what's his name that did the C sharp one? Oh, he's mm. on the blog. oh Bob Tabor, maybe Bob or, Tabor. Uh, Bob Tabor. Yeah. It works for Microsoft now. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, wow. it's, you know, so I was at a conference, I was talking to Layla, who's now at, at Twilio, and she was like, I was not even in computers, and I watched all your MVAs, and that's how I learned to program, and I'm like, <laughs> my, you know, like, it was so, I was like, oh, my life is worthwhile, I've helped some people out, so. <laughs> it's a cool feeling. Yeah. Yeah, well, thanks, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, thanks for being here, we have some cool shout outs, Luce in the chat, says hi to everybody, uh, Mortal here, which is super rad, uh. Ariandel, I can't pronounce everybody's name, from the Dominican Republic. What's going on? So I think you're just bringing in the people. Yeah, we're super excited. Tuesday's new stream. This is like brand new. I got a new layout. Yeah. Look how fancy and orange it is. So orange. It's incredible. It's so good. Yeah. I, uh, I did cheat, though, because this is the same exact layout that we use for our Nintendo Dispatch podcast recording, except for I removed the background, made it all orange, and, and I just kind of was like, well, I had a designer, my buddy Michael, made all this awesome stuff and I was like, I'm gonna just steal that. <laughs> so it looks oh, great. That's cool. Yeah. Yep. Very fancy. Yep. Uh Lou says that uh comes for James, stays for the coffee. <laughs> Very cool. So yeah, I will open it up a little bit. We'll first welcome all of our friends to the chat. Um uh, of course we will put these all in the YouTubes later and we're gonna be doing lots of YouTube stuff. But you know, John and I, we've been working together well oh my goodness, like for, close forever, but we got real close, like a very intimate relationship. Over, I mean, the past six months, we've been we've been at least once a week. We're like doing calls and stuff because we've been working, uh, trying to collaborate. Because I've been working on like the ASP.NET community stand up side and a lot of the ASP.NET community, and then you're coming in from like Xamarin and mobile and like other, you know. And both of us were like, hey, one of the cool things about .NET is that you can do a lot of stuff with it, like. I'm not just a web developer, or not just a mobile or games or IoT or whatever. I'm a, you know, multi-skilled developer, right? And so that was part of the thing we've been working on. I mean, among a lot of other things, but we're trying to connect across like the dot, the different dot net gulags and make us all friends. And yeah, and stuff. yeah, yep. it's been cool. We've been meeting multiple times a week, and we had this idea uh, to take this kind of dot net community stand up a little bit further. But first, I got thanks. David Sharp, Coding with Loose, thank you for the subscription with your Twitch Primes. You only get one of those every month, and you gave it to us, and we appreciate that. Wow. Bonus, I want to say additionally that this month, the month of June, not only will we do, be donating every donation, bit subscription, the Duke Langer Foundation supporting the Red Shank Duke Monkeys of Vietnam, but additionally, I will be personally matching all donations uh, because it's Pride Month, and we're giving to the Trevor Project. So multiple donations out to the Duke Langer Foundation and that. And all those donations also go into our work account, which then get bonus matched by Microsoft. Ooh. So it's like a quadruple bonus match at the end of the day. <laughs> that is a really cool thing that Microsoft does, is they match they match donations. And so that's something I've used over the years, too. It's, it's a really neat way yeah. to double it up. Yeah. So it's kind of cool just to have it. And thanks, everyone. And you can always chime in. It's funny because... All these pop-ups will come up, but John has no idea. So, like, Shia LaBeouf, I, well, like, Well, I am trying and, to glance over. 
And if you see me like, you're like, does John have like a wandering lazy eye thing going on? No, I'm looking at my other screen because I'm, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> so we wanted so. to, well, we have this website, right? Let's just hop over to mm -hmm. your computer maybe and check out this fancy yeah. layout. Wow, crazy. Yeah, so I'm sharing my screen. Looks okay, good. yeah, cool. So, so this is, we've had this ASP.NET community stand up going back for, I don't know, like 10,000 years, right? And it's been uh, a show that uh, Damien and Scott Hanselman and I have hosted. And then we've been bringing people in over the years. So you'll see here, here's the next show coming up later today, basically right after we finish here. Um, and, you know, we have, uh, so this has worked with YouTube for a while. And then also we've added in Twitch recently. So we've basically doubled the audience by adding in Twitch, which is cool. And you helped, uh, you like spearheaded that. And then also we've got this, this was the original one, which was every Tuesday. But then afterwards we've added on a every Thursday show as well. Yeah. Right. So this, um, this is like, this is the back end for this. And this is something Damien's been building for years. Like you can see going back, you know, four years ago, um, and it's, uh, a cool thing about this site is like Damien has used this site to kind of drive ASP.NET features. So like he was building stuff with MVC and he was like, this is way too hard. And that's part of like, like how he tested out things that became razor pages. And, you know, like you would say, like, I need better analytics. And so then they, he would push back, uh, working with the, you know, app service, uh, app insights to like get get that like better analytics going all kinds of stuff. So, th so that's been really cool. Um, but it has been focused just on this YouTube backend. So part of what we're thinking is we've got this .NET site. And if you come over to community, like it'd be really cool if there was a page somewhere in here where you could say, basically, I want to see all, you know, like show me the upcoming .NET community standup shows and like integrate with Twitch and all that. And then also, have things like show notes and and lists and all that. So, yeah, and right now, yeah. kind of that website, well, it, it's already finished. It's kind of its own magical entity, correct? And it's not really... Right. And it, at the same time, it's, it's all sort of, well, it's open source. It's locked in there. And mm -hmm. the one thing that we wanted to do is open it up and say, we want to have like a, an actual API. We want to create a mobile app from that API. We want the website to be integrated into the main dot we want it standalone so let's say that you have a a youtube channel or a twitch stream or something that has uh, needs like kind of a countdown event maybe you're doing um, you know uh, events every month or something or every week mm -hmm. for your user group you could have this here and we would expand upon it so we would not only have the links to the upcoming shows the calendars where to go once it's live but have that api so you could develop like i said apps with it a bunch of other things like that um and at the same time and the same yeah time, so what i'm do stuff like you're saying here go for it yeah oops well so like we've had some and i uh, these are kind of old these are back in 2016 but we had a thing for a while where we would have like show notes from the ASP.NET community stand up for some reason it's taken a while to load That's oh it's the whole Skype. Skype. Like, yeah Skype. Could be well. So what we'd like to do is have show notes that are basically a markdown file, and then the markdown file is um, is something that people can submit pull requests to, and then also like including links. So we always yeah. start the shows with community links, right? And so it'd be cool if we could actually have like these links, um, you know, and like using uh, well better and cooler, and then also <laughs> like. You know, stuff where, hey, this is neat. This is kind of an overview. But what if someone in the community wants to, like, write up better notes? Let's include that, too, right? Yeah. So, yeah, the we have big dreams. Yeah, big dreams. First, also, thank you to CanLab for the follow, Shadow Stancer for the follow, and two subs coming in. So much donations wow. happening right now. Alicio, thank you. Six months. Uh, you got that sweet, sweet, fully bearded James. Uh, subscriber badge and Varsarias. Thank you uh, for the sub two months strong. Super appreciate that. Yeah, so we um, we started this Kanban board. Everybody loves a good Kanban board, right? Is that the, right. Is that what we're thinking here? Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, I think so. so. It's, it's, it's cool, cool because, because we can, can um, I mean, I mean, the, the idea, idea here is people can watch, like we'll share out the, the, the 
link to the GitHub repo, and if people want to file issues or whatever, they can, you know, drop in suggestions. We, we want to do this, like, from the beginning in the open. Somebody was asking on Twitter, like, will this end up on GitHub? And we're like, it's going to start there, right? It's so already it's, there. It's, a it's already there. So, yeah, so that's the idea is, like, um, plan it out and, you know, here's what we're thinking. And then, you know, we'll... See where, where it goes. goes. And, and so we're, we're building this kind of as a prototype, and then we're going to turn it over to the official, like, .NET team. That, that, like, the, so the people that build the .NET website, right? And they're going to, like, integrate the feeds and do all the magic stuff to make it, you know, really official. So that that's cool, kind of, because we can play around and try some different things and get it how we want it and then say, here you go. Right. Nice. And I just want to let everyone know that I fixed the echo, so I apologize that on there. There's all sorts of things. Look at this. Uh, Sarvox says, just want to say this. I started getting into code through Microsoft Virtual Academy and became a programmer thanks to John. I'm now a project Yay! manager in a dev team. So big shout out to him. He changed wow. my life. I was at oh Techorama to say thanks to him, but he didn't bump into him. So say thanks oh, no. for me. Oh, my gosh. Ah. Uh. I'm sorry I missed you at Techorama. Um, but, yeah, thank you. Thanks for letting me know. That's the kind of stuff that that – powers me for months on end just hearing hearing that so it's always cool that's fantastic yeah i uh i i, I definitely i always every time i run into bob Tabor, uh i have I, hear, I heard a very similar story from heather when she started development uh she watched bob Tabor's mva on c sharp she's like i became a c sharp developer because of bob Tabor, and uh he was like nah he's all like you know shy about it but it's like stuff like that it's so cool so uh that's rad um cool Ah. Well, so we should get started, right? We should like, yeah. uh, I mean, I'm a, let's get into some code. So here's what, here's what I'm actually planning on building this from. This is from uh, right. MS. Yeah. Okay. So I've got a, let me see if I can remember what it is. Um, ASP.NET Core makeover. You just don't remember all of your AK.MS links? I Ever. try and remember most of There it is. Oh, cool. my gosh. Look at that. Yeah. So, so this is a presentation I've been giving recently, which is kind of like, what do you do in the first hour of starting a new project? So this is kind of my cheat sheet for some of this stuff that I like to do in a new project. Yeah. And the reason also, uh, by the way, that I have John on, not because that I love John, but also that I literally know nothing. If you've seen me on my stream on Fridays, attempt to do anything with ASP.NET and the, and the web, I don't understand how it works. So this is a problem, and, uh, and and I need John as an expert to only collaborate with well, me. But yeah, you know, you're kind of vice versa. Yeah. When we talked about this, I was like, I have played a short bit with Xamarin over the years, and I've never gotten beyond like the one or two hours into it, right? And I would mm -hmm. love to get deeper into that. So this was part when we started scheming this up. We were like, let's force ourselves to learn more, right? Yeah. So yep. Cool. Uh, let me show you what I'm doing here. We actually created that repo, and sometimes it, it can be a little too easy to just do file new project, and then you're like, oh, wait, now I need a project for tests and for mobile, and then you're moving stuff around, and then your GitHub like history is all confused because you're moving files and folders around. So one trick that that I like to use with this, and what I've done in the, the one we've got open there, is you can create a blank solution. Mm. So the nice thing with, you're like, why would I create a blank solution? And the number one reason is it's really, really fast. Yeah. <laughs> it, and, also, it is a, it's, and you can yeah. start a live share session. Look at me in there. Yes. That's why we did it actually. So we could, <laughs> there you are already live sharing. Yeah. So, yeah. So I like to do this and then you can go into this and you can say, Hey, I want to add something else, right? I can add a new project. Mm. Right. So I'm going to do ASP.NET Core web app. All right, so how do people, if, if they don't have that installed, like, is it in the project type? Is it web or something, or what is it? Yeah, so if you just do, like, web. So what else is in there? There's ASP.NET, th that one. There's web jobs. I always like to go through them to make sure people, like. Yeah, yeah, you're right. They're interesting. So um, this is the new, so... the new thing, right? Before, there was, like, so many things, right? And I was like, I don't, I don't know. But now this is a little bit nicer. Yeah, there, there are fewer things, right? So, yeah, so there's so... web. So I recommend, you know, the ASP.NET Core web application. So uh, this this is – now, we do kind of push it down the road a little bit. You still have to make some decisions because once I 
create this, then it's going to say like, you know, then there's the next step, right? Oh, yeah, that's so, right. That's right. Yeah. So <laughs> this is naming stuff is always hard, especially like in front of other people. Do I call this live.net.web? It's just so many dots. Um, uh, right? uh, I guess we can rename it too. But. Well, I hate renaming stuff because then it changes all your namespaces and then. Right, uh, right. Um, oh, so we man. could do uh, standup.web. I like stand, live standup.web. Live. Oh, no, capital live, capital standup. Ah, uh, okay. Man, come on, we're not Java developers here. <laughs> there we go. Oh, like that, that? that's, that's pretty. Okay, I like that. That is pretty. Okay. Yeah, it's what is it? It's kind of right. like GitHub projects should all be lowercase. And then, like, there should be a source folder with SRC. But then besides that, fair game. <laughs> yeah, yep. Yeah. Cool. All right. So here, uh, I've got different options. And I think we agreed that we want to start with a web application. So this is, we're going to build it, like, as a Razor Pages kind of standard site. And then we'll, over time, we'll change some of that stuff, change some of those pages to use APIs and functions and and what's, stuff, but prototype it in the front, right? What's the, what's the difference between a web app uh, with and a web app MVC? Like, why, yeah. why would I pick one over the other one? Good, Yeah, good question. So the history of ASP.NET, the, the first earliest ASP.NET was web forms. Web forms was like you drag controls onto a screen, you double click, you add events, you set properties. Um, it's really quick to get going with that. But the problem is it doesn't really map to the web very well. So it's it's kind of pretends to be stateful using this big hidden form field called view state. Mm -hmm. And and then also like with the web, you've got HTML, you've got CSS and JavaScript, and those controls kind of hid all that away. And then you've also got HTTP verbs with like get and put and post, and that doesn't really map to control mm -hmm. events. So it was kind of this big abstraction that worked for a while, but then people started moving to like Ruby on Rails and Node because they're like, you know, they are more web native and they're kind of, they give me a lot more control over my markup and all that kind of stuff. Gotcha. So, uh -huh. and web, web forms has evolved quite a bit, but it still is this kind of big abstraction. So the next big change after that was MVC, Model View Controller. And with that, you've got, your model, which defines, you know, the shape of your data. So if, if I'm building like a user, pro, or if I'm building like a product ordering site, I'll have a product class and an order class and a, you know, user class and that kind of thing. So those are my models. My views are my front end templates. So that's HTML with some little kind of tokens to replace things. And then the controller requests come into this controller. And so there's a, there's a method and then the method executes something using the models and then it mm. uses the views. And so that all works and it abstracts things. And it gives you all this control, but you notice there, I've been explaining this for a few minutes. It's like, it's, it's a little too complicated. <laughs> Half the people have left the stream already. Right. Well, and, They're and, like, I'm out. I'm out. Well, yeah. Cause yeah. I think like, I, so like in the Xamarin world, right, we use MVVM, which is just like MVC, more V's, more M's, one less controller. And, uh, and you know, it's pretty big, but a lot of people are like, do I need to learn all that? It's like, well, how big is your app, right? If it's just a few pages, mm -hmm. like, are you really going to bother it? But is, uh, well, this page is, this thing is one page, right? So right. that's why we probably wouldn't go with an MVC. Is it, is that that spa well, single, partly... single page app spa? Well, so there's, there's other options here. So I'm going to recommend we go. Yeah. I'm going to recommend web application. So web application is, it's basically, it's built on top of MVC. Okay. So if you ever need all the power of MVC, if you need to get in there and change things around, Got it. you can. But it actually uses a little bit more of the MVVM kind of style. So you have a page model, and in your page model, you can set properties and stuff like that. So you basically have a, a page and a code behind. You Got have it. a razor file, which is your markup, and then you have your code behind. I like so it. it's... Yeah. So then there's others, you know, there's empty, which is just empty. If you want to do everything yourself, there's APIs. If you want to build just a RESTful backend, um, and those you know, are, there's those seem like the, the biggest two, like web app, like I'm building a web app and they're there. So that makes sense mm -hmm. to me to pick those. I understand API. Like I'm just doing API. What are those things at the bottom? Things that I don't understand. Yeah. So these are, uh, so 
these ones down here, Angular, React, and React.js with Redux, those are if you want to build, like, so those are if you really want to build a front-end heavy application, you want something, like, I recommend these for if you're already a shop that has some good expertise with Angular or React, Got then it. these are going to be simpler for integrating the two. That because sometimes, we, yeah, we have people that are like, hey, I'm an Angular developer. I started using ASP.NET, and it takes me a half a day to get everything wired up. If you want to do Angular using ASP.NET, use this, and we'll wire everything up for you. Got it. Got if, it. If you, yeah, if you don't know what Angular is, I would wait until you need to use it. Okay. Right. I, yeah. So, so, and that's something where, you know, it's, it's, um, that's good if you want to build like a front end heavy app from what we're designing here. It's not super front end heavy. Gotcha. You don't that's need a, to do it. a lot of developers. I think it's very, almost the equivalent of people say like, Oh, when should I use something like prism or MVVM light or MVVM cross? Like what level? And that's while I think mm -hmm. the other ones down below probably do different things. It's sort of like, here's all the architecture and here's like, you know, abstractions yeah. of all these things or reactive extensions, right? So type of thing, but cool. All right, so web app, I'm ready. Yeah, yeah. So, and with all these, like, kind of like you said there, I recommend start simple. Mm -hmm. Web applications gonna get you a, a simple web page, you know, and then you can kind of go from there later as you need to. So, awesome. cool. all right, so I'm hitting create on this. We're gonna create the project. I got HTTPS by default, I see, and I can never get that working yeah. on my machine. So that I'll be interested to see. Okay, so so let's look. Actually, let's jump right in. I'll show you what some of these files are and how HTTPS works. I'm ready. And, stuff. I, it, and also on my machine, I want to say it's all right there. It's just literally all the files are there. Watch, I'm going to startup.cs. Oh, with the live share thing. It's huh? all there. It's pretty cool, including like it even does like I can run the app on my machine and you can browse the site and stuff. That's amazing. It's uh, it's pretty magical. Okay, so I uh, first of all, one big change. If you're used to you know previous versions of ASP.NET, this is a program CS. So we're actually it's a yeah look at that. <laughs> this is a, it's a console application. It's public static void main. Oh, here's, so here's like, a question. Hold on, we got a question already. Uh, so Harrison asked. I'll I'll do it in two two ways. Harrison was asking, what are the benefits of using one of those other frameworks like the React and the Redux? And then also he says, or he or she says, Harrison says. Um, how does that also apply to Xamarin and MVVM? So I'll let you go first. Like when would, what are the benefits there or limitations? Yeah. Okay. So, so um, if you want to use like the, the big benefit I see, and I share every week on these ASP.NET community standups, we share links and, and people will write these long blog posts about how to build, how to get Angular working with ASP.NET mm. or how to get, you know, and it's like, it's hard to do it right. And you spent because you've got all the Angular docs, you've got all the ASP.NET docs. They don't always match up. It's it's just and really you're writing two different applications and hooking them together, right? Uh, Angular has has like model view controller directives, uh, you know, dependency injection, all this stuff. So does ASP.NET. So you're mm -hmm. learning the same thing twice. Yeah. So here, let me actually do that. Um, let's just I'll, I'll show you what a new um, like you a new Angular app looks like. Yeah, yeah. Like compare and so, contrast. Yeah, that'd be fun. Exactly. So let's do a new Angular app. And I'd also like so, to say I'm a big fan of like the out of the box way of learning first, which is like this is what's going to be officially documented, officially supported uh, mm -hmm. in there. And when once they're part of the templates, they feel a little bit more official. But like Angular and those other ones are not from Microsoft, right? Like these three things are not from like we don't ship Angular, correct? That's a Google thing. Correct? We don't. We, yeah. yeah, Angular. Well, it's a, it's a community project. Mm. It's you know started by Google. Um, it's and then um, you know React from Facebook. Um, what's nice with these is we do work pretty hard to make sure that they integrate with that they integrate well. For instance, Angular and React both have a CLI. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. So you can go from the console and you can upgrade or you can you know, do stuff. So we actually build these so they integrate directly with the CLI. So I can build my app and then I can go in and use the CLI to scaffold things or whatever. Okay. So if you, if you look at this, one of the things we do, you'll see this client app here. Whoa. Yeah. And the client app has all the stuff like it ha it's built using all the kind of standard stuff. So for instance, um, well, I mean, there's a lot of files set up. 
There. Do you like files? Because we got files for you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. And so here oh, wow. we're actually digging into like, here's, it's a simple counter. And here's my, you oh, know, TypeScript action. Oh. There's my TypeScript. So there's my, there's my actual logic to run it. Here's my, um, you know, my Angular, like the component uh, front end stuff. Right. So yeah. Some things that we do too, like it sets up, here's my karma. So this is setting up for my testing. So my mm. front end testing, testing, right? Um, it has stuff for like lint, right? So my TS lint. So this is going to, you know, go through and handle uh, linting for me. So there's, and then front end too, you've got, you know, it sets, sets up these controllers. Then another thing that people don't think of is we've actually got front end and back end routing. Because sometimes when you click a link in a in a React or you know an Angular application, it's actually not going back to the server. It's just clicking through routes on the client side, right? Uh. So those two can can uh, fight each other, right? So we actually have stuff set up in here where we're having um, where it handles the front end and back end back end routing together. So this is kind um, of like so, uh, this is like everything, right? Like it's like here's everything and. Even for a simple clicker app, but it kind of reminds yeah. me of yeah when I do an MVVM a big MVVM framework, it's like this thing is meant to handle some of the things that they want, just a kind of a different pattern of development in general. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna work with that. So it's kind of cool that it is built in and works with it. Like if you're just getting started, it seems like this is a lot of code to learn. I mean, maybe if you're getting started to learn Angular, right? Now if you're just gonna yeah. build your first web app, and I think. A lot of people ask me about that with Xamarin. I said, just use the default stuff because it has all sorts of good stuff in. And once you get mm -hmm. further and you're like, I want a different navigation model or like different frameworks to different things like Prism, like optimizes navigation and payloads and deep linking and testability and componentization. It's like components. And I think it's kind of like a React model. Like here's components that you plug in. But um, absolutely. Yep. But usually a lot of that same stuff you can just do in Xamarin or you, like you said, you could do a lot in ASP.NET, right? Exactly. Uh -huh. Yep. Yeah, so just, you know, one other thing with this, too, that this does is there's actually, um, because we're using TypeScript and, you know, we've got potentially other things where, like, we're compiling, that we actually have to have support for, like, a server-side build. So you'll see that here's the package JSON, which is a, a node um, node package management uh, script. And here we have things for start, build, run with server-side rendering. Um, here we have my Angular. So getting all this stuff kind of wired up can take some time. Yeah. This What I recommend this for is if you're an Angular developer that's new to ASP.NET, if you're an ASP.NET developer that is, has, you know, like you know you need to write an Angular app. Like mm -hmm. now's the time, maybe your boss told you or maybe it's your like corporate requirements or whatever, this, this is going to save you time of learning how to hook the two together. That's cool. If you're, yeah, if you're just like, hey, I just want to build a website. Yeah. I want to close this. That's what I, I want to, I want to, <laughs> I want to just build a website, John. Yeah. Yeah. Can, can you make your font just a little bit bigger for everyone? Maybe 140 sure. on the bottom left. So, yeah. Boop. I like uh, Le Mans. He said, came to the Xamarin stream and got a web stream. Wow. Yeah. Well, every great, every great mobile app needs a great website, needs a great web API. Yeah, um, for sure. Well, and part of what part, part of what we're looking at is integrating the two together, right? Yeah. So we're going to build an API backend, and then you can hook Xamarin front end to it, a Xamarin uh, mobile app, right? Yeah. So, so what's going on well, here? Let, all right, so this is doing the kind of this is starting my web app, and what's interesting about the way that this works is this is actually this project is a web server. So it actually runs its own web server. So I'm going to switch right. this. C continue on. There's a package at my door. This is common in uh -oh. the stream. Go for it. All right. I'm going to take us. Uh, I, we're going to go off the rails here. Here, while James is gone. So I'm going to hit. I'm going to hit run on this, and it's actually going to run a console application. Um, and so this console app is so. So basically, th this website is completely self-contained. It is a um, console app that then spins up a web server and runs a website oh, well that I'm was back. fast yeah they, they do this buzz thing and then what they do is they just they just jam on all the buttons and then somebody yep. lets them in which is very not safe but i also grabbed my smoothie from emerald city smoothies so now i got smoothie that action quick. that was mm. very quick yeah they, okay, they're so over there I they make those smoothies real fast 
Ah. <laughs> so is this what happened? You ran it? You ran it without me? Rude. I ran it. I know. So so what's cool is remember I was saying it is a console application and it literally like it's a console app that hosts it hosts a website and then this is the website. So now if we go over, let's the, go back the, into the, this. The console app is running it? Well, you're gonna wake up the console app. Nothing yes. is impossible. Oh. So, yeah. So, okay. So let's check this out. Here's our page. Here's my index page. Okay. You notice it's going to say the word welcome. Hello. Right? So if I say welcome, James. Right? Save that. And then we'll go back over here. Boop. Are you going to do that fancy thing where it does the thing so i just refreshed it you can set it up so that it you know will in browser refresh and stuff but i didn't do that I so like that. but the the point is here's here's the the website here's the code right whoa i just i just started running the installer um cool so so this is this is the page and then if i want to do something like let's say i want to say the time the current time right okay so here's my page model Right. And so I can say, um, uh, so I have to stop it running in order to type the back end code. So I can change inside a page, I can change markup because it doesn't need to compile that. But if I want to change the code, then mm -hmm. I've actually got to get in here. Right. Yeah. So this CSS so HTML is kind of like your front end code. It's like a Xamarin app, right? It's like, it's just HTML yeah. and then there's some code behind. And, and it, check this yeah. out. This is a page model, right? You're, this you're is basically page like your page. Your page model. Our page model. What is that? I'm going to go into it. Right. Yeah. So the page model is this mm. kind of abstraction we've built on top of MVC, and it lets me set properties, and then I can deal with them here on the front end. So mm. let's say, like for instance, so I can say, let's do the time. Right. So prop uh, date time. What are you just using shortcuts for? What? You, how did you do that? Is that a thing? Can I do that? Prop. Yeah. Uh, so I did prop, prop. and then work. hit tab tab. Doesn't work in live share. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to use that now that I know that it exists. I, cool. I am a fan of it because it p puts in the get and set for you and all that. That's cool. Current time. Also, thank you, uh, Pujo Luis. Thank you for the subscription. Super duper appreciate that. Cool. Okay, so now I'm going to set current time. These are all the live stream things that you're not used to, John, because, John, you're so used to the .NET community stand-up, but we're just like, I know. blah, 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 blah. And then... No, uh, this is this is awesome. And part of why I wanted to... I'm, I think it's... I've been wanting to get into more Twitch stuff, and this is great. I'm, I'm happy to kind of learn the way of the Twitch. And now, also, people are really going to understand that I really don't understand ASP.NET. People, I, I didn't learn, I never have, in my entire life, I've never done ASP.NET, ever. Like I, I mean, I can scrape the surface of file new, right? But yeah, I don't understand. And there's so many shortcuts. Like I, I with, someone set up a cool shortcut for me and VS where I could type in like, oh, maybe this prop thing works. Oh, it does work. It just, sent, oh, it does. It, do, it just sent me all of your props over from your machine. Maybe, Whoa. I don't know. Oh. <laughs> Anyways, it's exciting. It did work. I okay, so, so anyway, check sorry. it out. I've yeah. created, I created a property. Yep. I s initialized it here. So I set current time. And so on get, so that's when I get the page. Yep. And then I'm setting current time to date time now, right? So now I can go over here and I can say, um, here, let's put in a paragraph so I can hit P. That's a little shortcut too. Look at you. And then I can say, um, model. At model, and that's coming from that's just a helper method. I see the models up there, but it's a lowercase model. Yeah, so there's two different things. The lowercase model is a directive, and mm -hmm. that says the model for this page is index model. Got it. And then that index model is this file right here, this class. Yep, that's like my did. So in Xamarin world, so I'm going to do this mapping for you in real this time. This is awesome. I love it. I'm learning. Okay. We're teaching each other. So this page model normally you would use something that's like implements maybe I notify property change, right? And mm -hmm. that would be your base view model, basically. It's kind of like your page view model, but it's it wouldn't be in your code behind. You'd have like a view model class, but for all intents and purposes, it would be like, this is that. But then what you would do is normally not have the code in this file, right? This would be like probably in your controller in this instance, but we'd put all this code into a view model and then mm -hmm. that model, we call that a binding uh, context. Um, uh, 
uh, right, binding. Right, right. So our right. binding would be like, that's the index model, right? It's kind of like your index view model. That's the only difference that it would be. And then you would have current time as something that you could grab. It'd be exactly the same, but you would use the binding syntax. So anyways. Cool, cool. Yep. yep. So this, and and so one thing I guess that's a little different is you don't have the whole like property change notification thing. Mm. This is kind of a one-way flow. So okay. I get the page and then the page says, you know, sets these things and then here's this. But if I go and make a change, I've got to actually like submit a form or something back to the server. Like a button. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yep. So, so now let's run it and see if I, if it actually, you know, does what I said it would do. Um, so now there are some things, if you do want that kind of two way binding thing. So there's, there's our time, right? Uh -huh. Yep. So there you go. So that's kind of the real quick for, for getting started with, with uh, razor pages. What's nice with this, if I didn't start with all the history of all the different, you know, what is MVC and what was web forms and all that, we could be up and running in, in a couple of minutes. Right. So yeah. the, the, it's very kind of like approachable. And it's like, Hey, let me start with a web page. For me, I like to start with, give me some working code. Let me tweak something and break it. Let me like, you know, move something around and fix it. And then I like, now I'm ready to kind of dig in and understand more of why it worked. But I like to start with just like, okay, let me start putting some words on a page kind of thing. Yeah, so. I agree with that. And I'm so used to, I haven't spent a lot of time with Razor Pages uh, at all. I mean, so I haven't spent any time with Razor Pages besides like seeing a few videos, but I'm so used to doing brand new MVC app because that's what it was only, like really the only uh, option. Right. And I'm used yep. to like seeing this page and there's all these controllers, all these things. I'm like, I don't know what to do anymore. So I just wanted to, you know, this is, this is yeah. the blank, this is like file blank project basically. Yeah, well, it, but it does include some cool stuff. For instance, HTTPS is all set up. Mm. If I want to get um, login set up, that all works. Um, I have support for a, a page, so a page layout where if I want to go and change things, you know, like in my navigation or my footer or whatever, you know, mm. like, so, you know what I mean? Whereas if I just create a, an empty site, it's going to be super empty. There's Got nothing it. in there. Okay, so. gotcha. Yeah, cool. So, and and let us know in the in the chat. You know, we're we're kind of going over some of the like, you know, we're explaining the concepts and stuff. Yeah. So, but but uh, you know, hopefully this is helpful to some folks, especially like we do have some Xamarin viewers. You know, and yeah. So yeah, you probably cool. might want to build a website at some time. Also, Jay Long, thank you for the subscription with Twitch Prime. You only get one, and you spend it on us, and I appreciate that. That's my. That's why I like that saying. I heard someone say that one time. It was like. You only do get one a month, so. Um, wow. You know about Twitch Prime? Cool. You know about the Twitch Prime? I don't. I don't. Teach me. Let me tell you about the Twitch Prime. When you go to, like, I think it's prime.twitch.tv, if you have Amazon okay. Prime, you have Twitch Prime, mm -hmm. okay? You already have it. All this time. You have it. Now, here's what's cool about that is, one, when you mm -hmm. activate Twitch Prime, no ads. You don't need to see any ads at all. You need no ads anymore. Gone. You have to activate it, though. You have to act You have to link the accounts together, Okay. So okay. now you'll never see an ad ever again. And then at the same time, they give you one free subscription to any channel on Twitch for free. Um, Amazon basically is paying people. Like yeah. just they give people money. Now that subscription, it's only for the month. So uh, at that point, um, what's cool about that is that that money goes to the subscriber. It doesn't auto renew. So it, once it's gone, mm -hmm. you have to, you could change it to somebody else and then boom. Um, and someone said they're adding maybe, oh, ads back. I never see ads, but that's there. But if you do them Twitch, if you stream, like I get 60 days of video archive for free, which is kind of nice, but I hope they don't get rid of ads. I hate ads. I, I would pay mm -hmm. Twitch prime, Twitch prime plus. I would do that. Yeah. So anyway, Twitch super prime, super prime, Twitch Actually, Optimus prime. Well, I think also a lot of the, the streamers tell people about it because people don't know about it. And then, of course, they want the monies. But we don't want the monies. We want to donate the monies. So that's what we want. Yeah. We also get cool emotes like my Duke, my Red Shank Duke that uh, I have and some coffee and some other. Ah, I can't hear. Oh, yeah, those where's are the the red, there's the Red Shank Duke. Very cool. It's the most beautiful monkey okay. in the entire world. All right. Let's do something. I'm ready. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we've got a basic site. Let me show you just just one or two more quick things in here as far as like, what do I do if I want to configure things and whatever, right? Mm -hmm. So we've got the startup class, yes, which has, we'll mess with this when it's time, you know, we don't, we, uh, 
But this stuff here is, is like this what's, is where the HTTPS redirection gets set up. What's um? So it automatically has it. What's the set compatibility version up a little bit here? Yeah. Okay. You normally don't have to worry about that too much, but the point here is they they added this because they wanted to allow for making kind of like not breaking changes, but like modifying behavior. And so it's it's written up in the docs if you search for it. But basically, they wanted to start like adding in some new behavior um, and letting you opt into it. Ah. So there. Yeah, so so this is by default, this opts into, because I'm creating a site with version 2.2, it opts me into that. But if I had an older site and I'm migrating from like ASP.NET Core 2.0 and I'm moving up to 2.2, there's some things I need to verify before I turn that on. Very cool. Um, gotcha. Honestly, I kind of forget what some of them are. I, you know, I think it's some things like that are like optional additional security and API verification and things like that. Got it. So. Very cool. cool. Yep. Uh, one other thing is if you want to set up any configuration, there's this app settings JSON file. Mm -hmm. So pretty empty at this point, um, but you can put stuff in there. So I could just add something, John. Yeah. This is awesome. Now I do a little on there. Got it. Yeah. Saved. There it is. Saved forever. <laughs> um, you should make that a constant. How do I make it a constant? Okay. Oh, uh, I see. Oh. You can. Hold on, I can do this. I can come back into the startup CS and then. Oh my goodness! String. <laughs> this is awesome. There we go. Now it's in there forever. I'm just gonna. I'm just wow. gonna add random code while you're not looking. Yeah, yeah. I'll have to keep an eye on you. Okay, so um, one other thing that I do want to point out because we're gonna start. You don't want to put like secrets in here because mm. your app settings could get checked in to GitHub or whatever. You just don't want to have this file in your project with secrets, right? Yeah. Yes. Maybe so check secrets. check this out and tell me if this is a Xamarin thing too. I can right click and I can say manage user secrets. No, that's not a thing. <laughs> uh, so this is a pretty cool, cool thing. Secrets. It's yeah, a secrets.js so, file or JSON file. That's cool. It is, but like I don't know if you can see where this is. It's in my user app data. So Whoa. like if I Open containing folder it's actually not in the project right what? so this is something yeah so what's cool is this is on my disk but i can check in the entire project into github without setting up a get ignore and my secrets are safe all right so first off pat pat asks is this new in 2019 or is it exclusive to dotnet core that feature that user secrets is a dotnet core feature mm. Um, and it's, it's definitely, it's, the idea with this is there's this whole thing where we thought through, we used to have this thing called web config and we still, you can mm. put in a web config file. Mm -hmm. I'm used to and, that. I remember web config. Yeah. So the problem with web config is it's a folder that needs to be in your project. And then you like have to be careful not to check, you know, you can, you can say, well, pull some other things into my config from this other file. And then you have to say, but don't check that into source control and is all the, you know. Yeah. And then in on the server, then the server, it, it just got super complicated and managing different things between my development box and my test server and my production server is like crazy, right? We got, so, a, little, got a little raid going on here. Hold on, raid hype. Wow. Raid what hype. Is, raid what hype. is going on there? <laughs> 15 people. Thank you, Michael J. Foley. Uh, Michael, the Michael Jolly. Thank you for the uh, raid. Oh my goodness, Emma Holloway. Thank you for the follow. Emotes be flying everywhere. Sky uh, East. Thank is, you for the subscription. Hoffling. Thank you for it. I even created this little animation that's currently playing on the screen <laughs> just for raid purposes. It's brand new. I was waiting and hoping that I would be able to to do it. Uh, really rad. Welcome everyone. We are building. Uh, a new website with my good friend John Galloway. Um, we are going to be building this thing called Live.net for our .NET community mm -hmm. uh, stand-up, uh, which is super duper rad. And we just so far created our base ASP.NET web app. I have no idea uh, anything about how the internet works. So I only understand mobile devices because the code is in, it's inside of it. Um, mm, and then he was right. showing off the secrets out JSON. And I will say that I, that I don't see that on my side because it's in that special folder. So that's kind of cool. There you go. Yeah. So what's cool here is I can go in, I can put in like, for instance, we're going to be working with YouTube. I'm going to need mm. a YouTube API key and I can't check that in 
I, mm. you know, I need that to be separate. Yep. And I could even like, as I'm working on this, I could open this file up and work on it in another screen and nobody sees my API key. Right. And what's cool with this is if I create something like, say there's this John here, yeah. if I want to create my own version of that, your own John, the John is the most right? awesome, you know, that's what he can. Right. So, True. or, you know, so then I'm yeah. like overriding it, right? This the secrets secret. will override your app settings. Yeah. And uh, then in production. Yeah. So, so then in production, so I can have like a default value. I can override it with my secrets and then up in production, maybe I have a, um, like on my server, I'll say, you know, um, I'll have an app setting in my ASP.NET app service on Azure or whatever, wherever I host it. Right. Yep. And I, and I can say, you know, John like rules the server or whatever, you know, I, and so I, I can make my settings. Got right? it. Got it. Cool. Cool. Uh, cool. Yeah. All right. So I think, why don't we, we have a, let's take a look at our list. Uh, yes, we have a, uh, so anyone that just came in, I'm we have a, uh, I'll do a what in here. Boom. The GitHub repo is live and we have a project on there too. So we're kind of managing the project. M M1N, mm -hmm. ka, thank you for the follow. Appreciate that. Uh, so we have this project and we have this to do and must have to do's. John and I couldn't figure out all the things that we wanted to do. So mm -hmm. we decided that we're just going to put two columns. A lot of stuff. All yeah. the things. So when do we, what is, so we're starting with this create basic website. Drop that Let's, thing. Whoa, we yeah. Yeah. I and think the so, basic uh, website should have some requirements, no? Yes. So, and honestly, I'm not sure what the best way to, how we edit, edit. these notes. Edit, edit note. Uh, whoa. So, can I just go in here? Let's say, what do we want to include? We want a list of, um, list of videos. Yeah, list of mock data. We want the mock, do we want mock data? Like, uh, Yeah, we do. Let's make yeah. a separate one. Okay. Mock. Data. We can use my Jeff sum instead of lorem ipsum. I have a Jeff Goldblum ah, library you can use. That is cool. There's also a thing called Bogus. <laughs> bogus? Which, bogus. Uh, I don't know if you've seen Bogus. Uh -huh. Bogus is kind of cool too because we're going to need some like complex data or we could also cheat and do use uh, Damien's existing stuff from the previous site Probably. Um, where he's already got some existing shows and YouTube links and stuff. That's true. So... Uh, so those are two things. Uh, we do want to integrate with YouTube API. Well, I think we have one for a YouTube API already on the What's basic that? website. Like we already have that in. Uh, in you're the right. You're right. So I think okay. we want mock data. We want a list shows. I mean, create the, create the template. We probably mm -hmm. want like a area for countdown, like top, like a header section, maybe. You know. Yeah. Countdown. Yeah. And then maybe like um, a footer that has like links, a footer section, you know? Yep. Yeah. And then uh, do we want like a live player or is that like, wait, do we wait for the. No, we have a, we have a to do for that. Okay. Over there. Is this good enough then? I think that's good. Yeah. I'm really interested in how we're going to lay out shows because it, I don't know how to do that. So. Ah, yeah. uh, cool. All right. Yeah. So we are, let's, let's jump into that. Let's make some, um, I'm going to just totally hard code this with HTML and we'll get a few of them going and then we can jump over and like switch it over to mock data. Does that yeah. sound cool? Yeah, we got some so we're gonna, questions. So someone said, should we put a section to have links? And I think we're going to have that. We're going to use that new service, yeah. right? That we, that someone made. Yes. So this is great. So this is, we have a show notes and we have a um community links on the left community links actually let me throw, i'm gonna throw oh, that it's in required here. now yeah they're kind of together right yeah so what we're going to use for this is the url list the earl um the earl list um and so this is pretty cool this is a site that was created by cecil phillip and Burke Holland. Mm -hmm. And um, what's neat, the, like for instance, today's ASP.NET community stand up, these are the links I plan to feature. Um, and anyone can use this. This is live now. So the earliest.com. I'll link it. And you, yeah. And um, I was just chatting with Cecil this morning. Um, 
you know, they're planning on adding in things like an API and, you know, so I'm going to, and, and that's also, that site is out on GitHub. And so we can contribute to that too, if we need to. Oh, cool. So, yeah. So that's kind of the idea there is to include those. And we can have like, I don't know, we can maybe ask for an embed or we can go out and get a list or whatever. Right. I like that. So cool. cool. Yeah. Okay. So we are going to take advantage for this page. So we could do this right on this. I'm going to use this handy feature of close all but this. So mm-hmm. slim some stuff down. And then we do actually, though, we do want the, the HTML for it too. So we want to have um, we want to have a list of shows, right? And I guess what I'll do to start with this is I'll just say list. And we'll do a list of, I don't know, string. Yeah, I like that. And we'll just have like show show name, and then later we'll turn it into a list of um, of shows and okay. and stuff. So show name, and then yeah. You like to do you like to create it like right here? Yeah, that's a good idea. I'm I need to do that fan. more. Like fan. you know, this is one of those things where muscle memory. I like there are some things that are in C sharp that have been there for years now, but I'm just like. I'm I'm slow with that. Okay, do you want to? I think I think even in it? this, then you can just like get rid of it. You can just be like only get. Right. Yep. And you want to use that because you don't want to use this. Now that's a method. Right. Right. Well, so explain that. What what's the? Is the no, advantage? it's not a method. No, that's the same. Yeah, I think, I'm pretty I think sure. We, yeah. Right. I'm pretty. You could test it. You could do this. Right. You could say show name with an S because there's multiple names in there. And then you could do like mm. add, right? And then you could say hello. And then what you would want to do is you would want to say show names dot add. And then you would say hello to, right? So I think cool. that this, so if, if we did something like this, now it's a method. Right. Right. But this, right, right. We that uh, just, yeah. this just turns it into an auto property, which is the same as this, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think just behind the scenes when you compile. And like we could validate it because here if we put a breakpoint, you know, if if this was getting called multiple times, then Mm -hmm. you would see this add twice basically. You'd only see one of them, right? You wouldn't see hello, hello Uh, because it would create a new list when you called it. Yep. I don't know how to run that though. Can I run this? Let me see if I can just. Let's see. I think I can just hit. It does not allow debugging. Oh, you need to enable it. Oh, how do I do that? I, I want to give you that. all those powers. Yeah, click on that button. And then... Uh, mm. Manage shared server? Do you server? live share window? What's that do? Oh, there it is. Okay. I don't know what that... There's got to be... Whoa. Uh, yeah, see, like, I'm in there. That's me. You can see where yeah. I'm at. And then you can do... Maybe it's manage? All right, let's do this. And it's shared servers. No, no that's, that's definitely not. What if you right click on my name? No. Nope. Mm. Should Can I you... unfollow you? No, don't do that. I don't know how to do it. Oh. All right. No, I don't know how to do it. <laughs> All right. Well, if you debug it, though. Okay. Let's do it. Oh, focus request sent. Neat. Okay. So now we'll run that. Oh, but we have. Well, no, this is cool. And this is something I use all the time. Uh, well, first of all, we have build errors Oops. and then that's, that's the dialogue everyone complains about because it's like your code broke. Do you want to run it anyhow? It's like, why would I want to do that? Like, um, so what did I do wrong? Yeah. So we're current time. So here's the oh. problem. We no longer have current time in our markup. Oh. Okay. So we'll just get rid of that. And now we'll do the magic control shift B to build. Can I do this? Hold on. Can I do something? Can I do at show names dot count? Does that work? Yeah. No. Okay, cool. Uh, so except you did name. So we'll make that show names. Okay. Paired program. Cool. cool. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's, let's give it a shot. There were build errors. Show names. Let's compare. Um, Maybe it doesn't have the get. Yeah, I wonder about that. If it needs to be, if oh yeah, hold on. Like, Model dot. 
Uh, is that what it is? That's it. Okay. That's it. Man, I'm they're learning. Programming. I'm, the I'm magic programming. of programming. Yep. Programming, John. <laughs> this kind of cool. goes. Yeah, it's just like a property. Okay, I'm excited. Welcome. Yeah, yeah. To, let's see. There we go. In. There's our breakpoint. What do you want to see there? Oh, yeah. Ho so now hover over. So it's funny because if I hover over, how many are in there? Zero. Is that right? Doesn't seem right. Mm. It's funny when I hover over it, it says show names get. And then. Yeah, so maybe converting it to the property, oh. maybe it is calling that every time, right? Nope, that's what it is. Okay, yep. So what happened here, th I've made this mistake a billion times, right? So it's creating a property. This is what it's creating. Ready for this? All right, you might have to stop debugging here. But sure. This is going to be great. This is a great learning lesson because I've had this happen yeah. one time in Xamarin Forms because you need it to be public. So what this code here is creating behind the scenes is this. Mm. Right? So every time you call get, it's creating a new list. Exactly. It's like I'm your, it's, a, it's an empty list factory. It is an empty list factory. <laughs> <laughs> it is. So here we need to say there is a get which returns it and we're going to default it to a new list. And now we're yeah. going to work properly. Yep. All right, cool. Yeah, that syntax is a little bit like you it's have tricky. to think about it, right? This defaults it, but this doesn't run on every get. That's exactly. an important thing. Yes, perfect. Yep. Okay. Now, yep. And then sometimes I'll do like show show names equals. Do you ever use the initializers? Which one's that? Oh, uh, yep. Go for it. Yeah, so we can go like equals, and then you do. Um, uh, where is my? Oh, there it is. Right, and then I can say like. Oh, yeah. Right. Um, and then we'll drop down to there. I don't know. So I, I oh go God. back and forth. You could yeah, do this. You, right? you could do add range, right? I'm a big fan of just add range. I like that I also ah. get your IntelliCode, by the way. Yeah, and that then, is nice. And then, actually, I think this takes an I enumerable, so I think that would work. Like that. Let's just see. Or maybe we need to just control Z a bunch. Do we blow it up? There's no argument that. Takes an I enumerable. Maybe we got to do new array. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there you go. I don't think I cleaned up your code at all. <laughs> I think it was better when it started. Let me, I'm just going to do control Z a bunch because we'll get back to the add. Okay. Right. Oops. Ah! Uh, so we'll just do add. Just add a bunch of them. Yeah. All right, we'll fill this in. We'll say Xamarin.net community. Hi, yeah. Xamarin, we're going to do Android X. John Dick. We're just going to do this here. And then we just did a, uh, we'll do like, we'll try to be like real, right? There we go. And then we did a, uh, we have a tooling or Visual Studio. Calling it Visual Studio now, and then that was like Unity with mm -hmm. John Miller. John Miller, lots of Johns coming on the yeah the show. No. Then I'm part of the problem here. Desktop. That was probably like some .NET Core for WPF or for desktop. Mm -hmm. That that's pretty good. And that's then, good. Then what you do is you just go up. Oh, oops. Up. Oh, oh gosh. Oh, copy and paste them. Oh. Oh gosh. What's happened? Okay, everything's good. There we go. Now we got a lot of dummy there data. There we go. Perfect. Okay, so we have dummy data. We haven't implemented it here at all. Let's just run it, and then we'll mess around with the front end, because that is one nice thing, is you can change mm. the markup on the front end. Yeah, so we can now just kind of modify this HTML, and then it's a website, and so magically. Yep. yep, all right. We can. Do so now we have 12. Yay, we know how to use a list. <laughs> Welcome, yes. 12. Yes, yeah, so all right. Knight says that we could have added a new list of string or anything that's a list. But yeah, I'm, I'm, how come C Sharp doesn't support that? I mean, that seems like it should know that it's a list you of know, things, you know? That is funny. I that's actually, Mads. I talked to Mads Torgensen one time and I'm like, hey, I think we should have better syntax for just creating a list. Like, yeah. you know, <laughs> and he, he was like, yes, but like, remember that anything we change on the, on the, C sharp language is like we have to support forever. You can never like you can even you can deprecate stuff 
in .NET, but like the language, you have to be just, you know what I mean? So he's explaining the. Well, you know, if Apple can remove the headphone jack. Just there you go. There takes you go. courage. Takes courage sometimes, Mads. <laughs> Do it. I'm ready. Okay. So I just hit four. Just going to write. Oh, I can't write. use my completion. Because you're debugging. Yeah. Uh, oh, can you? There it is. Yeah. There it is. Okay. Okay. So, and I'm just going to say. You can't for each uh, for this thing? Actually, I could, huh? Always be for eaching, I say. Unless yeah. you need access to that for some reason. To the count, yeah. Yeah. So our uh, show and show and. Uh, and that is something where I have wasted time with the lowercase and the uppercase. And that's model. the problem is if they, if it wasn't model, right? If it was not model, then you would never type model there. Exactly. And do you have to do an and sign it? No. Oh, this is your... Joseph told me this. Again, people are like, James, you should know this, but I don't know anything. So this this thing here, that's declaring a block of C-sharp. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. How does it know how yep. to end? Like, how does it know that 13 is the end? Magic. It's Classic just magic. Classic ASP.NET team, am I right? Just magic. Yeah, yep. So here, I'm going to put in... I'll start with a very simple... We'll just do a pair... Or, whoa... Oh, I'm out of there. Oh, yeah. So here, actually, it does. It can get confused because it can be like, uh, are you in HTML or not, right? So I'll do show, and we need to do the at sign there. So we're kind of hopping back and forth. This is C-sharp code inside HTML, inside C-sharp. So Razor Syntax like lets you kind of hop back and forth between the two. Is there a way, um, like, I know we put the stuff in the code behind, here, mm -hmm. like, can I just put C sharp, other C sharp under here? Can I be like, you know, like, Wait, like, sorry. like, can I be like var yes. test equals hello? Yeah. So, Is so one allowed? way you want to do that, you can do that. Mm. So you can do, there's a few ways you can do it. One is you see here where we've got the at sign and the braces. There's also oh. a functions block. And when you look at razor code, they or blazer, excuse me, blazer uses functions. Yep. Got it. So you could use that in here though. If we had like a go get shows from server and then it could it could do that. And yeah. And, and open yeah. It. You could, although they really like the, the recommendation is not to do that. Damien says a no, basically. Yeah. Well <laughs> because <laughs> Yes. Um, but because the reason is that it's a you don't want to be kind of because this is really more of a template. This yeah. is something where we're doing all our logic in the Git. We're setting all our variables. We're doing kind of all our processing. We're setting things up, and then we're saying, "Okay, page, go and render yourself." I see. Got so it. don't. So generally, you you don't want to have like stuff back and forth between the two. I see. Got it. Okay. All right. So I put that in there. I remembered to save the page, which I didn't do last time. And so now we're we should see there's all our paragraphs. Mm. All right. Can I do this? Can I be like minus? Uh, wait just a second. Oh, yeah, yeah, because you put in. Oh. No, so. I do this. Because they'd be like, welcome 11, and then all of our Stranger Things fans would be like, oh. Uh, sadly, no. Okay. Apparently not. No. Yeah, so in order to do that, this would need, you'd need your entire thing to be inside an at. So you oh. can. Yeah, so if you put that at sign out in front there and then get rid of that second one. Do you want two or me? There yeah, you go. <laughs> we're both hovering we over it. I know. We're like, you got it or me? So, yeah, so the razor syntax. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Cool. So it, it is a little bit, and the, and it is well documented. It's all yeah. documented out on the um the site. But, and you can also see from the IntelliSense, right? So it, mm. it does... Like all the stuff that's gray, that C sharp code. Got it. Okay, okay. so that's ugly. So we're going to take two steps to making this better. First, we'll put it in a list. Step and one. So the way you list. Yeah, li. Oops. So we'll do a ul. An ul. I know. Yeah, I know so this. I know. I know that. I know these. The these. This is just HTML, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. So we'll we'll take that. Actually, this isn't saving me much because I got to move all of it around, but. And then here it's saying, don't put LIs and don't put paragraphs inside. Whoa. Don't do that. What are you doing? Yeah. 
there we go. It's looking yeah. good, right? Yep. So Amazing. this this is now an unordered list. Wow. That is not pretty. Okay, so now this is the part where like five or ten years ago I would spend the rest of the day like, <laughs> you know, trying to remember my CSS and mm-hmm. all that kind of stuff. Fortunately, now we're we're gonna do this with Bootstrap. What's a Bootstrap? So okay, Bootstrap is a UI framework that was originally created by Twitter. Mm. Um and the idea is like, hey, let's start you out with some basic kind of conventions. And so, for instance, um, if you want, if you want to do like, uh, here, let's look at here's some components. I like a card. So if I want, I want a card. You want a card, right? Yeah. So if we look, here's card. I like cards. We want to put each of. The, I want that. That's what I want to do. You want to just do exactly this to start with? Yeah, you just copy it. So we can do that, but let me just show you oh, okay. so you know there are some other cards out there. There are some cards that are like media cards oh. and all kinds of stuff, right? So this is just sort of a – this is like a – because a UI – It's a UI library, UI kind library. Of, right? I like that. Yeah. So so what's nice – there's a few things that are nice with this. Um, one is it, it makes it very quick to just be like, hey, throw this in your page, and it's not going to look bad. Like – you could maybe make it better, but like it's it's not going to be horrible, um, right? So I'm gonna. And then another thing that is nice with this is it is themable. Um, so as long as I'm doing something using this, here let's just I'm kind of talking and typing at the same time. There yeah. you go. Oh, give me. So it's it's themable. So so that is nice because if I want to go later and say like buy something or whatever I can go and like, or, you know, turn it over to a designer and say, Hey, can you make my bootstrap thing work better? And they're like, yeah, I know, I know bootstrap. Right. Got it. Okay. So, and I'm going to get rid of this tech or well, I need a div. What's in a div. A div. So a div is kind of like a generic box on a like page. boxes. It's like a frame. Okay. Yeah. So we basically, I'm going to leave this one here. Um, or actually, let's get rid of this. Okay. Get rid Oops. of that. Someone uh, says that their ancient coder said he loves the questions that I'm asking. And then, oh, good. <laughs> and someone also asked, um, Louis says, translation is that James just really wants material design. And that's kind of what, I guess that's like uh, Google has uh, something probably similar to, to that. I think it's Polymer, right? Yeah, yeah, you're right. So that so that's kind of the idea. It's like, hey, here's some basic building blocks, oh, right? Look at that. And so it's not amazing, but it's not like horrible either, right? Yeah. And then we can also troubleshoot it and we can look like, well, why did it line up like that? And why you know, and then you can go and and see, mm-hmm. like for instance, this should be in a grid, right? Yep. And and you can go through and you can look, and I think they probably have a list of grids. Um no. Nope. Yeah, there we go. Right. Yep. So that's more we wanted like a card group. Right. Mm. So all right, wait a second. Yeah. So card group. So there's a card group. There's also a card deck. And I honestly I have to look. These are ones when they're not attached to each other, which is yeah, we don't want to attach equal each other, right? Just want to... Yeah, so this actually is not bad, right? So because yeah, you want so every I... card to be the same on the screen. Yeah, which actually, that is one thing that HTML does not make super easy. Well, here, we could just do oh, this. Right? A... We could just do card deck, right? And then what's on your, let's go back to the view model, right. the, the website. Yeah, right, so, so each one is a card. Okay. Wait, is Bootstrap just, how did we get Bootstrap? Bootstrap is included. Here, oh. actually, let's let's take a look at that. That's included in the template. Oh. So if we go, okay. yep. That is specifically where that is, because I do like knowing kind of where the magic is from, right? So this is this is my layout. This is my default page layout, and it just includes Bootstrap. Oh, this um, default underscore layout is in. This is the. This is in every page. It's pages shared and then layout. So every page includes Bootstrap just by default. Oh. Yeah. And then is this and render render body? That's what's going to render the body. Uh, where are we at? 45, line 45. Yes. 
Oh, yeah. So I was this say, is where it's that, protected. That index.cshtml looked very blank, right? Yeah. It's funny because yep. it's blank, but then also like there's some other stuff in this file, bro. Yeah. But so this is the idea of like, don't repeat yourself. You don't want to put your footer in every page and all that. And, you know, story time. One of the first websites I worked at when I was getting started as a developer, I worked at a financial company and there was a website and they're like, we need to set up search for this site. So we bought this product and you need to go through and update it and stuff. I started looking at it and I, I opened up the files and there were 20,000 files in this website. Oh my God. And the reason was because this company had just hired tons of vendors and the, they copied and pasted every single page was a separate copy. Mm. So if you want to update the footer, you needed to do find replace in 20,000 files. I see. So it's like, I see. this is the kind of thing that that fixes, right? It's one place. If you want to change something, that's where it's at. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay. So you have, you've gone through and updated some of this. Yeah. Just putting card, card deck. That's what I did. This class of this div card deck. And you know, one thing that people do complain about with bootstrap and it, it is a fair criticism is bootstrap is is repetitive and it's kind of verbose. So you see like the word card, it's like card, 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 card. And there are some other frameworks. There's one like semantic UI. There's some others out there that are a little bit less verbose. Hmm. Um, but you know, it works. So. Man, it'd be cool if I could do like, see the website on my machine. So I think you can. And I think if you go to the, tools options, that's where I think live share is at. Yeah. Well, there's also, okay. Yeah, go there. Go there. This is, I uh, figured it out. Yeah, and type in live share. We were trying to figure this out earlier. This right here, look at all that. Yeah. So there's like, uh, there's increased guest limit, which we only have you and me. Right. We have authentication and non personalization account. Okay. Allow guests. No. Nope. Allow debug session connection. Allow guests. Yeah. So I think control. that's already on by default, that connection thing. Hmm. So check this out. If, if I go in here and I say manage shared servers, uh, is that it? I think I can go here and I can. Is that it? Shared build allow allow guest control. I think gives to do that for me, but don't end it. Shared. Oh, it is a shared server, I think, right? Because then you're sharing like your server with me. Yeah, exactly. So here, and honestly, I don't know what I'm doing, and probably somebody watching will be like, "What's wrong with you?" So let's do port number. Was it five oh twenty thousand? Oh, twenty thousand. So now I'm going to say add, and I don't know. I'm, still, I'm a little scared. It's okay, do it. Okay. So now if you browse to localhost 20,000, I think this will come up for you. And honestly, I'm going to be a little shocked if it does, because I really don't. <laughs> but it's like, oh, because maybe it knows to port it over. Yeah, it, it does this magic thing where it like shares it between multiple people. So this is something where we probably need to read the docs or go probably. get some probably. get some learned up before next time. Yeah, not working here. But okay, anyway, so someone said, okay. uh, I think we need both card deck and a card instead of just replacing you, the card. And you card are deck. right. So the uh, card deck wraps all the cards. It wraps every card. So you're saying up here in, before the in here, I would say div class card equals deck. card deck. I didn't read the docs. You were, yeah, oh. yeah. Because we were messing around with this live share business. Oh, cool. I just reformatted. Whoa. Okay. What happened? Oh, did it just launch? Oh, I keep I keep clicking on the shared server, and I, I'm trying to, like, undo it. Impossible. Because uh, I don't. It. Yeah, I don't want it there. We'll figure this out for next time. Live share. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Server. Okay, so we have a card deck. We have cards, card body. You keep doing that, and I'm just oh, okay. going to see if it's getting better. I say boot strap card. Oh, okay. Look, at I added a monkey photo in there for you. So, so that is cool. The problem there is we have too many in a row, right? So yes. now we got to look at the thing of, like, how do we decide how many go in a row? And... 
So there's a whole thing of, uh, we don't want that columns. So, and I know there is a grid system that's kind of the default thing. We kind of want it to um, auto wrap really. Yeah. We want to say how many in a row, right? Yeah. And so I need to look and see if this is built using the same, actually, I'm going to cheat here slightly. I'm going to look at another site. Um, that is one of our workshops that we do. So the ASP.NET Core app workshop, and this is one where we go and we build out a whole conference planner. Uh, and yeah, so I'm going to look at our front end for this because we we do the same sort of thing. We have a um, we show a grid, and so let's go into index. I believe there's some like crazy card decks. Okay, I see card decks. They're like here's only three, but here's not how to do more than three. card columns. Yeah, uh, we so don't want card so columns because that'll be all messy. So I didn't do a card oh, deck before, and I, I forget found why it. I switched. I found it. All we right, need let's some see. CSS. We need some CSS. Nah, we don't need that. CSS. No, it says column count. Oh, oh where, it's card oh, columns. Oh, Max. Where are you looking at? Bootstrap. I'm gonna I'm gonna Google this. Right, this is how you do it. You can say Google Bootstrap card. Oh, there we go. Someone figured it out for us. Columns. Card deck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So columns in a row. So call MD3. And we can explain. And that's actually what I've got here. Right? Oh. Yeah. I see. So that is, so we're doing a row, and then we're doing those card columns inside that. There is a little bit of weirdness, and I'm, I'm not, it's the whole card deck thing, I'm going to want to investigate more. Mm, yeah, because um, really what you would want is like, Three on desktop, one on mobile, right? Right. And so that's exactly, it's responsive. That's what it does, right? Mm. So I could do, um, I think I want to do that. I think I'm going to, I'm not sure, but I think I want to get rid of the card deck. Rude. I know. Yeah. And we also, we need a row. So we do. Uh yeah, and again, this is one of those things where like people complain about it being a little verbose, and it is. It's like you've got to have like wrappers and containers, but some of that is because that's a little bit how. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. I'm, is. I'm not super impressed with the uh, the docs on this one because uh, just because. Oh, my live share. No, it's still there. I'm kind of like, you know, I, I want it to be. I want the docs to be in place. Like you just magically up. Oh, Mm, no. Yeah, but that didn't work because I probably have too many rows. And this is something where it's like people are, yeah, I want the row inside the for each. All right. I oh, so you want this. This is, Boop. this is fun having people watch. Yeah, it's, it's this is like, I, I do enjoy it. Like, often yeah, sometimes yeah. you get stuff yeah, done and then a it's like, slower, duh, yes, but, of course. Yeah. All right, yes. Cool. So, yes, thank you. Yeah. This is funny because I wrote all this code for that other website. There it is, right? And then you can go and you can set additional properties on them to space them out and all that. But so there we have our list. Well, that first monkey is a different height. It is a different height. And so why is it? Oh, it's because the title is longer. Yeah, but you would think that it, I thought that the, oh, because it's not a card deck anymore. Yeah. Maybe can you wrap that div in a div? No, like that, if, so that's kind of a, actually a, a total joke that people make. It's like, just wrap it in a div, wrap it in another div. div. Couldn't we, oh, you would just say, it's like, could you say card deck row? Like, refresh it now. All right, well, I've, so do, are you able to save it, by the yeah. way? Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. It says it's so I'm, I'm still getting used to that. No, that didn't do anything. <laughs> you, know, you can see what I did. I didn't do anything. That's correct. Yeah, and a lot of the time when it's like if you're wrapping something in a in a row that's mm -hmm. like normally not the, what you want to do. But well, what if you just so, do just card deck? Now do it. All right. Card deck, card deck, card deck. You've got high hopes. No, I didn't do. It. Yeah, I didn't do anything. That's good. Maybe they so, didn't actually save. They probably did. That's possible. Anyways, all right, we'll go back to a row. Okay. Okay. So this is something, honestly, when I did this, what I ended up doing was I did add custom CSS, and it bothered me. Like, normally, you should not have to write custom CSS. Mm. I'll show you the, the custom CSS I wrote for this one. 
Yeah, because kind of what we're going for is we kind of want it to be like, here's some cards, like wrap three cards as much as possible, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, actually, no, maybe I did end up taking it out or I forget. I did mess with some of this stuff yeah. in there. I'm going to Google this thing. Google it. Okay. I, go I Googled, then I went to the docs, and then it was like, there you go. Not helpful. Not helpful, Google. Wait, card, card. There deck. it is. So div class equals card deck, div equals div and a div, 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 div. That's it's too many divs. I think they're messing with us. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm going to say card, card deck multiple rows. Yep. Um, and by the way, this one here, let's, I'll, I'll work on some of the stuff with the um, responsiveness here because I, I want to do this four and we'll compare. We'll see if we like this. So this is four in a row. Should be three. Okay, so I'm looking here. Yeah, so someone, oh, no. Uh, this, our code looks correct. Oh. Uh, no, this looks... Oh. I think you have to put it in a container. Oh, no, how'd you do that? Oh, man. Yeah, but see, it's still not the same height, or mm -hmm. it's still a different height. It is... So this is the thing I messed with before. They are actually all spaced evenly, meaning row two is okay, but the actual, this container box doesn't get taller. So, mm -hmm. and then someone else is saying dash MR3. So let's try that. This is dot, fun. Dot MR3. Dot MR yep. dash three. Well, so you don't actually put the MR. The MR. Mad, I have no idea what's happening. Here. Dash three. Like what is a magical MR? Max, max rotation three. <laughs> so that is there's all these grid styles and that's where you go and look all that stuff up i see this looks pretty good i'm pretty impressed it's like a collection view yeah yep yeah. so mr is margin right so that's that's uh that's what they're saying there so the names actually are pretty and i'll show you where you get all that stuff from yeah. if you go into this layout thing this is where this is kind of explained some of this, right? And so they have that, and then they've got this, which says grid. And this is this whole grid system. Hmm. And there actually is um, – so this actually has gotten simpler over time because it's built using Flexbox. Uh, yep. and, and what they found over time was, like, everyone wanted a grid. And so then, you know, things like – uh, bootstrap and even before that like jQuery UI people would build all these grids and so finally they they got like codified into this flex box okay um so, so now bootstrap gets smaller over time because it builds on these standards mm. um so a lot of so they actually are like it all looks like weird magic for a while but then after a while it's like okay then the naming patterns you know, make some sense. So if you uh, look at, so here's some responsive names here. Let's look at where we have. So this is saying SM. So that means small. So on a small spl display, you would, this one is eight and then this is four. So they total always to 12. So here's four, four, and four. Um, this is like our grid system in WPF or Xamarin forms, right? We usually use like yeah. stars for it basically. Yeah. 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 So here's a, and it goes through and shows all the all the different stuff for that. Um, one other thing I do want to pull into this, and it's just stupid and cheesy, but I do like it. Is I'm going to put in some drop shadows just because. Always, so if we go, always. Right. So here I actually went in and I say, shadow. shadow. Wrap it in right. a div. Just wrap. No. Right. No, no, no. So you're no. saying this is on the card. Okay. On each card, oh, we'll okay. just put a shadow class. Okay. And there so, are a lot of divs inside of this. I'm not kidding. Yeah. Um, so you had to put in the style width. That was, we that copied that. We had copied this. You can remove it, I think. That was, we copied that from the docs. Oh, huh. let's yeah. see what happens. Let's, oh, maybe that was just messing with it. Shadow. All right. Now let's, let's see if we explode it. Oh, oh too much. Little so we shadow, did... Yeah. Yeah, well, no, the problem was because of taking out that um, size. Oops. Hard. Yeah. 
And, you know, bootstrap is one of those things. It's not quite like, you know how like with regex, at least for me, every time I write a regex, I go in and I have to mess with it a bit. Um, it's a uh, interesting nature. Same sort of thing where I go in and I'm like, uh, mess with the docs. And then after a while, I'm like, I totally got this. It totally makes sense. And then I like have to go and look it up again. So. So, uh, so I'm going to try this other one. My live share just crashed, but it has been an hour oh. and a half of live sharing. Actually, an hour oh, and wow. 50 minutes. That's pretty good. Uh, okay, so someone says, there's a lot of things. Someone says some, some other stuff need to be outside of the loop. That's probably true. So we have... Oh, you think the div column probably needs to be outside the loop? Right? Yeah, and then we're just iterating for the shadows. Each of the, each of the cards. Or for the cards. Yeah, that makes Let's sense. Let's try that. Yeah. But someone else that says the right margin is too large. Try M2 or MR1. What they were saying is the margin was there. Cool. Uh, John, cool. <laughs> yeah, so for oh. here, we could get rid of that. And I think is the MR, is that specific? That's on the card itself where you set the margin, correct? I'm back. I'm back inside the code. All right. Let's see what's happening here. And again, this is something where I would tweak with it. Honestly, I'm not sure why it's so wide now. Hmm, maybe we'll put back that MR th or that thing that you just got rid of. Oh, um, oh, I see. And then, oh, yeah, someone said do style equals with, I don't know what 18 rem, it's a good rem cycle, contain strict. Strict, yeah. So, I mean, we can tweak with it. Normally, for me, when I'm using Bootstrap, if I'm writing custom properties and Bootstrap classes, it's like mm. I'm fighting the system a bit. All like, right. I shouldn't need to do that. And I, you know what? I want to try something real quick. Let's get rid of that shadow. You think the shadow's doing it? Like pushing yeah, it? Yeah, sh the shadow knows. The shadow shouldn't screw it up, but I want to eliminate that as a thing. So, there, that's interesting. I turned off the shadow, I saved. Oh, and someone I says that we moved the div column outside the for each loop, and it actually needs to be inside the for each loop. Yeah, I'm looking at this codeply.com. Yeah. It says that. You have, they have a container, then they have a row, well, column. I'm SM actually going to res. You know what? Okay. We have been tweaking code and refreshing the page, but it's actually not restarting. <laughs> so, so I think maybe when the live share thing um, crashed, uh, maybe it it's actually it. not been. I'm going to move this div in because according to the documentation, let's follow here. the docs. According, oh gosh. My output window has decided to be the entirety of it. Oh, Visual Studio's reason. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, because you it's hit debug. Up and... It hit you hit oh. debug, and <laughs> and then uh, I started making changes, and live share got mad. See, look at that. So uh... this has been. This was a problem that was not really a problem. It was not refreshing. Yeah. So now I can put back in my shadow. But I think, yeah, we want to also do this, right? This this is correct. Because you need to add those columns in there. I'm looking at this yeah, code apply thing. Yep. Yeah, that is correct. Got it. So the row goes outside. The columns go inside because the column defines each thing in the grid. Yep. Because if you want to have a mixed thing where you have like double wide, you do three, three, and two. or uh, whatever, Got it. Right? Okay. Or, you know, whatever. They, yeah. they total it. Okay. So now let's go back here. Oh, cool. interesting. That was four. Now it's four because we have that's three. So we do three, 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 three totals of four. So now if I want that back, I could do that. Four. Yep. And then um, put a margin rather than a right margin. Um, so for that, we would look at margin. Ah, uh, yeah, that's fair. I don't know what I'm doing. 
put yeah, a, no, put, so, a, put a two margin around everything. That's what that's kind of saying. Right. So you know, yeah. whatever we could tweak with. Yeah, this we'll, over we'll time, mess with it. Right. We got we got yeah. some stuff on the screen. I love it. So it's two. It's two thirty five. Yeah, when are cool. we going to? Three o'clock. Two hours. Three o'clock. So, so now let's look. We, we have a few things we could do. One is we could pull some of this out into a, you know, like a, a test class or whatever. Like we could call into a service that says, go get me my shows. Right. Mm. We, you know, abstract it into like um, test data. Yes. Yeah, so I could have or, like an eye data service. Right. Does that, yeah. uh, I mean, let, let's, let's talk it through. That's, yeah. that is an option. We have, oh, also another thing is we're just getting a list of strings and we really want our shows to have like data time and yeah, yeah, yeah other stuff to it. Right. Yep. So, so maybe let's, create a model cl model folder. Yeah, let's do it. So here. Is that, I, oh, I actually, I can create a new file, but not a new folder. Interesting. Models, yeah. Let me see if I can add a new, I'm going to add a new file. Yeah. Well, it doesn't work. New so. file dot text doesn't work. Oh, did I just add that? Yeah. Well, that's funny. I can add just yeah, just a text file. <laughs> that's just. a limited value. As yeah. Well, then then what I could do is I could, I could rename it. You right? Could rename it. Yeah. Beautiful. Right, and then the hack. That, and then I did I just create a file on your disk? Well, that's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. I think so. Yeah, we don't need this anymore. Right, cool. Could you rename it to .exe <laughs> and then run it? <laughs> yeah. Probably. Okay. So for yeah. our show, let's talk about what we want. So prop. So we probably want an ID. Yeah. Let me guessing. look at live.asp.net and see what they have as a default. We need. Uh -huh, uh -huh, yeah. They have a title. Ooh, we should have tags, right? Like the tags. Uh, or we we have... Do you? So that's an option, by the way. Right. We could go and. You know, not recreate the. Oh, yeah, see what they got. Probably right. want the, at a minimum, the model of a show and then. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah. And then probably want to add more onto it. You want morons? No, more onto it. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, so I was actually just. Well, John Galloway humor, people. Well, John Galloway humor. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, these are all like, there's no weird classes. We could just do that, right? Yeah, I like that. Do we, do we want to use a date time offset? Is that correct? When do I use a date time and when do I use a date time uh, offset? How does that work on the, on the internet? Because I'm going to deploy it to a server. And are all servers UTC time? Is that how that works? No. Oh. Um, so, and the main thing I know about date times on the internet is be very careful <laughs> and read the docs on them. Just <laughs> bring in John Skeet as a third guest. Yeah, it's not a bad idea. Yeah. Um, yeah, because they get really complicated. Um, so I do know generally you do want to store date time offset. You don't want to try and store like a local time. Gotcha. Um, and there is also some, go some good math in there to handle stuff. I don't know necessarily if we need provider and provider ID. I don't think I so. I think we can get rid of those. All right. ID makes cool. sense. Title makes sense. Yep. Has title, sure. <laughs> yeah, well, actually, this is a really cool feature. So the idea, and we, we don't necessarily need this one, but this is a really cool thing where you can create derived properties where you basically create a, a, or a calculated property. Um, uh -huh. What's nice with this is then in my razor, you can say if has title, do something. If not, do something else. Uh, got right? it. Mm -hmm. So is new, do something. Is in the future, do something. Exactly, exactly. So, mm, okay. And you can also you can create those here, but some you can also create them right in here too. Like, so this would say like has any shows or something like that, you know? Uh, and it would basically say if show count is greater than blah 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 got or it. if you know. Okay. Um and then over time we may also I think we wanted to see YouTube as our like source of truth. Is that true? Yeah, YouTube is the source of truth. So, we'll, so how this will work? So, anyone that doesn't know, is we we do stream on Twitch and on YouTube, but YouTube is our is sort of our truth because all the shows get backed up there. And what we do is we add any of the shows into a playlist. And what we're really going to do is 
scrape down that playlist on a recurring basis and sort of <laughs> David says that he David Sharp <laughs> YouTube that is a good point YouTube is yeah. maybe not the best source of truth yeah it's um, it's uh, I mean it's <laughs> we definitely clarify what we mean by that <laughs> source of the da- the the playlist it's our data source data source yes. it's our data source yes. right so but not for things like the shape of the earth or things like that correct maybe don't want to get all that information from round YouTube. definitely round. i mean that's that's yes okay. um so part of the reason i brought that up is because here we have our id our int id mm. is an int yep but there's also the youtube ids are not ints right they're, they're like not they're those weird strings or i don't know does does youtube provide an int value I mean, it, it must. Well, I know one thing that we wanted to add in here would be like public string. I'm a little bit further down, but uh, like short code. Yeah, exactly. And so what this would be is, so let's say if I went to curious is because that'll be nice because then we can launch people directly to, to it. And I think right now we scrape off the playlist. Like when you go to live.asp.net, it, yep. it, if you click on one for gRPC, like watch this, okay? So, uh, yeah, so now, like when you click on that first one there, what you're gonna mm-hmm. see, uh, go ahead and click on it, nothing will happen. And see how long that URL is? Yeah. Because it's putting you inside of the playlist. Yep. So you know? this is the show. And the show. And that's the playlist. Yeah. So the short code. So like. Is that PA? Yeah. So like, what you'd really want to do is like, have a. Like this would be. I'm just going to annotize this, right? So like, if this is the show, then this would be the short code. Oh, and wait. Then, so you're in the. Oh, I'm in the code below there. So I'm yep. just kind of like, annot- like, what is this, right? Mm-hmm. And, um,. I guess they give you the thumbnail. That's very that's very kind of them to give you the thumbnail. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, so I wonder what it looks like. Well, and while we're at this, I want to take a look too at the API, right, and see what yeah. does the API provide us. And partly because I think the API has changed has possibly changed since the mm-hmm. um, since this was first written. There's an API v two, and now there's an API v three. Oh um, uh, yeah. You know what I'm okay. saying? Well, there is an ID. It's a string. I wonder what it is, though. I bet. So, and they do have a thing in here where you can query this directly. You can try the API. So, uh, I don't even know no. what we can do for... Does that scroll down? Oh, there it is. Execute. Yeah, so you can execute. So. There you go. Hmm. Choose Thanks. how to access... So I'm going to access as me. Wow. Sure, why not, Google? You get all my credentials. 400. Oh. Error. So there they need a required parameter, which is part. And I think that part, if we look at this. You think it's the playlist? Is, I don't know. Let's look, let's look back at the docs. Fine. Part. Comma separated list of one or more playlist resource properties. Yes, yeah, that's what it is. Right there, playlist, author, title, description, tag, time created, part snippet. I think it's that. Do you want me to put in the playlist value then? Yeah, do that. All right, let's see what happens. See what blows up. Okay. No, that wasn't right. (laughs) Missing parameter. Filter. Mine rated ID channel blah blah blah. Uh oh. Oh, you need the channel ID, maybe. But that's not required. It doesn't. I don't want mine. The part parameters specified by a common instance. Playlist re- property properties like author, title, description, tags. I'm creating. Oh, you can say ID equals. So would I do that here? No, inside of the part. Really? Because there's also know. an ID. Oh, I don't know what it is. Well, let's let's check one more time because we want a channel ID, right? Uh-huh. 
Oh, 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 you know what you need? Oh, oh, I think the part is what you're requesting back. So put that ID into the ID that you had, right? Because what this is put saying is you here. need a filter, right? You need that. So I think if you do that, do ID. Just type in part ID. And then, yeah, do that. Yeah, run that. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Part, yeah. What? Yeah, yeah, so what part is asking is it's saying, give me the ID of this playlist or something, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure what all the parameters would be, but something like maybe... Yep, so it says something. kind is playlist, and it gave us back an ID of a playlist, and the playlist was what we put in. So it's basically like you want a playlist, here's your playlist. I think that you would want the... Okay. So I actually, I'm in the playlist API, and I should have been in the videos, I believe. Uh... I I would like to think this is still helpful because... Helpful for me. <laughs> because we want the part parameter is a comma separated value of one or more video resources that you want to include mm -hmm. and of course I'm resisting the urge like I could just go over and check the previous code but I think it is useful to kind of go think, through and... I think what you want to do is go down to the filters right okay well I want to just try execute oh, and see it's going to say you know, then it's going to be like you didn't uh, provide required value, right? Yeah, part. Yeah, part again. So right there, it says right there that you can include these parts, right? So you can include an ID, content details. So if you type ID in there, that it'll return the ID. So these are like the things it's going to return. That's oh, what the part is. Right. Right. But then what we need to do is we need to figure out how to get the videos from a playlist. Like, how do we filter the playlist down? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that that's cool. So now we'll just say, this is probably going to give me no filters shown. Yeah, I'm going to type in YouTube. Playlist well, items is the, is the name. You know, while you're doing that, I can go over. There is a service written up for this before. Cheater. I think there's yeah. playlist items. I think that is the... Go back into the Google, the YouTube API. Mm -hmm. And then is there playlist items? Ah, see, you were just wrong. Go over to your left. Playlist items. It was, so I was close. It's just playlist One up. items. There it is. Boop. Interesting. All yeah. right. All right. So playlist gets you the playlist and playlist items get you the items. So here you could do give me the. So here I need to put in a playlist ID, I bet. Um, and I don't know content details. Where do I? Uh, that's something to put in. Yeah. Do ID. I wonder if I can just oh. say two. Uh, you think? You know what I mean? I don't have to write it out. Mm. And then for the playlist, I need okay. this playlist. There's a lot of developer jokes happening, and I'm not reading it, but. Oh, good. I don't know what's happening. All right, so there we go. And you gotta this one you gotta redo. That's funny. Two. No. All right. I have to actually type the word in. Seriously. That's you know, when I think of stuff like this, then I'm like, we're wasting bytes over the internet, you know. <laughs> the content details, yeah. It could just be uh Hey oh. Look at that. So this is that and right? that is no. something that yeah, so and then you need to basically query the playlist and then query the item. Then you need to go and get the videos for those playlists. And there's probably page tokens. I guess. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, I hate that kind of stuff. There may be a way, a lot of things do a thing where they'll give you like a composite results back. Mm. You know what I mean? Where it's like, I don't want to have, like that's part actually of what GraphQL will let you do is like do um, define like, don't make all these calls back and forth. Gotcha. Um, so I don't know. That is something we may want to play with. Also, there's in here, I want to take a look at what they're doing, right? Or what Damien had written before. So, and let's see if he, so he does get shows list. 
Okay. He says, go get playlist items and list of snippet. And then get video details for each one. So I wonder here if we're doing it. Yep, yeah, there we're doing a videos request. So first a list request and then a videos request. That just seems sad. I don't want to do that. Right? So there's first we do the playlist right. items. And here's one other thing. Well, at least we know I what it's returning us. That's what we were looking for, because we're going to put this into an API at some point, right? Seems yeah, like but check web. this out. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So this is actually making use of a Google API's NuGet package. Ah. Right? So we don't need to necessarily. So the place you find that is in your CS proj. And there's going to be Google API's YouTube v3. Cool. Okay, so our, our main idea here at some point, so I don't think we want to write any of this code. The idea mm -hmm. that today the website has all of that in there. And what we want to do is we want to put that into an Azure function that gets triggered all the time, but then also create a web API on top of this. I just did this with my Hanselman site, which was cool. And um, mm -hmm. so I think for right now, we need the data model, but I think the YouTube integration goes into the Azure function, right? And then... Yeah, yeah. yes and no. What I propose doing, okay. if we're going to write our Azure function using um, using C Sharp, is I would, I would first build... What I've been doing lately on sites is I'll first build just a simple website, and okay. I'll do all the code inside the site. And okay. then I will... Once I've got working C Sharp code, then I can like say like let's move this over into a function. And maybe we could create a instead of putting all the code into the website, we create a .NET standard library. Yeah. Like put put the stuff yeah, in there, that. right? We could even put that model in a .NET standard library today, right? And then because the mobile app is going to need some of that data at some point too. Wait, we, we can do it to do right. it now. We can do it later, but yeah. Yeah. But that, that's not a bad idea, and, and you're right to start thinking that way early on. You know what? We may forget this for next time. I don't yeah. mind adding in that standard library. Yeah, do it. Right now. And then we can then we don't have to move a bunch of stuff all around later, right? like it. So class library .NET standard. And do you want to explain what the kind of point is of .NET standard for sharing? Sure. Do people yeah. know that already? Or? Uh, I think so. I'm not positive. Uh, I would say that, well, .NET standard is like just the easiest way basically to share code across all of your .NET applications. So whether you're building mm -hmm. websites, mobile apps, backend services, Azure functions, desktop apps, it just says, Hey, every .NET platform has all of these APIs and you can add this library to every single one of them. That's kind of it. Yeah. Yeah. So I started to create a dot models, but I think if we just call it dot shared and we put all our shared stuff in there yeah yeah cool so here we can do like now we could create a models inside of that and we'll just move that over fix your video your video got all small <laughs> it's funny. All what yeah just use this new feature i can you can like i can edit oh no one ever saw that i edited it it was like boom it just moved it happened that's magic man i'm good at the stream stream life all right so we got class one yeah there we go like so that. now I can delete this and we want to call that the namespace we do want to copy. So we'll delete that. Yep. And then we'll go here. We'll do. A lot of people are also enjoying the simple questions. I like that you also, Skull Crusher said, simple questions. We'll leave it at that. The simple questions that I'm asking. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I, I think that yeah. often, you know, I when I go into a new project or something new, and a lot of these are just like, how do we want to architect it? What type of things do we mm -hmm. want to do? You know, and um, what properties do we want? It's kind of so, what do, how do we want to use the API? I think it's uh, all relatively great questions. I love that the .NET standard thing showed up right there. That's cool. Yeah. Yep. Uh, oh, here's a thing, by the way. It's prompting us to start using IntelliCode. I'm just going to say yes, including your own custom classes. Sure. Do you mind if I take a short little? Yeah, sure. Go for it. Hey, on, have you on, been using on the, on the code that we already wrote? <laughs> so much. That code. is really cool, right? So yeah. what IntelliCode does is it it learns from the way you're naming your classes and stuff, mm -hmm. and then it'll help recommend things later. That's um, nice. So. So now it's it'll actually my... know about our show, hopefully. Yep. And then we could probably retrain it once we've built the website a little bit more. That'd be nice. Yep, exactly. 
Cool. Uh, so, okay. So we got way into this thing based on my original kind of question of, do we need an int ID or is our ID this URL short code? Oh, um, I think the short code should be our ID because, um, mm -hmm. yeah. I agree. Yeah. So this is basically, this is a string. Yep. Oh, what file then, are we editing? We have two shows. Oh my goodness. Oh, make sure that you, cause you drag and drop, but make sure you copy everything from that file there into the other one. Yeah. And we didn't so, save it yet. So that was the problem. I can oh. do it. There we go. Okay. I'll do it. All right. I'm going to take this one and then I'm going to move it over here. All right. Now delete that other one. Yeah. Delete that. Get out of here. But yeah. Now the ID is going to be the, yeah. Cause the YouTube ID always has to be unique. Mm -hmm. It can't not. So yep. it's impossible. That's how it works. I'm actually going to delete that other models folder just so we don't forget. Yeah, so it'll push us towards using the other. That's a good idea. And then now we'll want you to add a reference. Yeah. And that, I think that's great to just do this right from the beginning. And then we're not like later on, like, oh, we should have, you know, like, oh, yeah. we've got to refactor everything. Right. So uh, remove and sort usings. We don't need all that stuff. Cool. Cool. All, all right. right. Feel good about that so far. Uh, so it's coming up on three. Yep. What I'm thinking, we may want to like commit what we've got mm -hmm. and like start planning out, like make some notes on what we want to look at for next time. Does that sound good? Yeah, that sounds good to me. So I think right now what we should do is, I like where it's going. I think that what we should start to do is start to build some sort of shared service that um, the mobile app and this can run. So I think for next week, mm -hmm. let me go ahead and put in... Uh, um, I'll go on to the, the, your GitHub yep. and John Galloway's, there we go. I think, well, you can do it on yours. So go there on the, that's the work in progress. And maybe we should do mm -hmm. edit that and then we can do finished. Yeah. So edit that one. Okay. I always think I should be able to double click. You maybe that. using it wrong. I'll tell Nat, Nat, fix it. Um, okay. So I think here we could do like six slash four slash 2019, right? And then this is what we did. And then six slash 11, here's the other stuff that we want to do, right? So, so far we have a list of shows. Yeah. Yeah, we did that. Dummy list of shows. Yeah. And then we like, yeah, created, created the model. And then next week we should create a mock data source, right? Mm -hmm. and um, and then the countdown header and countdown footer. Yeah, so we can remove list shows. Yeah. Cool. I like that. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Cool, cool. All right, yeah, this seems... I mean, f including, like, all the just basic stuff of, like, getting started, and, you know, yeah. and, and we did, you know, we messed around a little bit with Bootstrap, and we, you know, we got kind of a basic layout going and stuff, so... Yeah. Oh, someone also uh, asked, quick question for John. Where do I put a suggestion for the .NET stand-up? Yep. So actually, I Code Stencil, uh, I'll check in with you because we, we've already, you DM'd me and we'll, we'll work. Um, I'll, I'll get back to you on that. Uh, you can, the best thing, honestly, is just pass them over to me on Twitter. Well, don't um, we have a form so, that people can fill out? So we have a... No, we don't really. I don't think we have a form where people can request shows, but we don't have a form where people can like. So, and it links. You know what? It's a good idea. This is to do, right? Is this project on GitHub? Yes, it is. Bang yeah. what inside of there? Bam. Yeah. Submit. So cool. Yeah. Submit community link. That's a great idea. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Why not? Bam. Cool. Uh, so one last thing before I've got, I'm going to push this all up to the GitHub's, right? Push that code. Do it. Uh, okay. So let us, I think we can add everything. We have no uh, secret, so we will stage it all. We need to save. I crushed it from 2013 to present. Changes. Yes. Stage. Initial commit. Shia. 
Commit. Warp. Sync. Push it. Well, did you do it? And yeah, just do it on master, I think. Yeah. There you go. Very exciting. We should, and we should also maybe fill in the readme of like when people go there, what it is, right? Totally yeah. true. Got five minutes? We got five minutes. We can do that. We can do that. Okay. Do, do. All right. So we can say um, community stand or, you know, this site site is a prototype for a new community stand up uh, page and mobile app. And you're right. And yeah. and then yeah, and is built live every week, and then you just you know spam my Twitter Twitch link everywhere. So, and also I want to tell people, I know a lot of people were probably as you're typing that were thinking like, oh, James, you know, you know, not 1080p this week. What's going on? I didn't want to stress the connection. There was literally a Comcast truck outside my building, which scares me. One Comcast link, like, you know, just truck just sitting there. That's, that's scary. Uh, and then yep. I didn't want to push the, the bits because I've, I haven't really ever done this with multiple people before. So I was like, ah, I'm not sure how I feel about it. But uh, we'll see kind of how it goes. But I think it looked, it looked pretty okay. It looked good. So for this point, I think issues are good. I don't think we're ready for pull requests because we really do want to start yeah. building it live and stuff. Um, no pull. I agree with that. Okay. Uh, so I'm actually going to create a separate section for contributing. And does this seem good? Uh, is there a better link I should use other than Twitch TV, James Montemagno? That's it. That's it. All right. Cool. Yeah, that sounds good to me. All right. Like and that. there we go. We have did all the things. We have some basic code. Yeah. So that's a, that's a decent start. And and kind of this is this is new for me to the whole Twitch thing. It's I'm <laughs> part of. Honestly, part of the reason I've taken some time to get into this is it's like usually I like to kind of line my things up and present it when I've got my stuff together. And so I'm having to get over that a bit, which is just fine. I think you did it's great. Uh, <laughs> John, you're a you're a pro. You just don't even you just don't know it. But you are <laughs> super, super pro. All right. Well, let's get. um. Awesome. Now we're in the full screen of glory. Well, yeah, so this would be our first week of doing it uh, yep. every single Tuesday, one o'clock to three o'clock. We pick that time because John literally in about what? 45, 45 minutes, minutes, 40 minutes, 40 yeah. minutes. You're going to be starting the dot net community stand up ASP.net community stand up. And yep. you should talk about this website on the dot net community on the stand up. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I'll, I'll call that out. Well, and we, we can did. we can get people involved. And yeah, I think this is fun, you know, for people that are new to one of the you know if you're an asp net dev and you want to learn about xamarin if you're a xamarin dev want to learn asp net or just whatever like come come learn with us yeah i think so too all right well i want to thank you john for taking time i'm excited next week and i think what we'll do is probably as we're going we'll start to scaffold out i'm going to make you create the mobile app like i'm just going to walk you and code with it because once we have like a service that returns some data we could just yep. kind of build the website side by side the parts and, and bits of it, right? So you can be like, oh, now we're yeah. going to add this page to the mobile app. Boom, you can see it and things like that. And right, my, right. my plan is to make John a mobile developer. This is my, and and I'll go on. Well, John's goal is to make me a web developer and better together yeah. in the world of .NET. It's good to go, basically. Yep. So, um, all right, well, this is great. Uh, I think what we should do is, since we have a lot of people here, and since you haven't started yet, we should probably do a little... Um, We'll do a little raid. We should raid I think. something. We should. Yeah. We'll go over to. Everyone's been streaming though for about two hours, which is kind of funny. I, there's this website called Belly.io. You go to Belly.io/slash/programming, mm -hmm. and then it shows oh. how long people have been coding for, which is kind of yeah. Belly.io/slash that. Mm -hmm. So I think we'll maybe. So like right now, Code Phobia has been going for two hours. We all started at one o'clock. That's funny. That is funny. Um, and I, th I know Lena Lux has been going for like five hours, so just nonstop. A bunch of other people. Yeah, you can kind of see everyone going. 
Yeah. So we're gonna hope that um, maybe Code Phobia is going. Do we want do we want DevOps with the staging server or Robert Table is doing Docker and Gatsby JS? That seems complicated. Let's do the DevOps. Let's do Code Phobia. Let's do that. All right. Okay. Uh, well, thanks everyone for tuning in. Uh, super rad. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and switch over. We'll let the re uh, credits roll and all that jazz. Um, there's no be no out music because. No outro music because John and I, we That's need to figure out an week. outro song for you and me next week, yes. plan that, and then we'll play back okay. that song. Okay. <laughs> so yep. let's, let's get head over to code phobia and I will go ahead and set up that raid and thanks John for being awesome. And thanks everyone for tuning in uh, and being super rad uh, in general. I will make sure right here, I'm going to make sure you can always do bang what, and that will do it. Join John. You can go to live.asp.net. Uh, over there, yeah, belly.io code stencil. That is correct. Uh, that's a cool yep. website. I learned about it recently. So, all right, buddy, I'm going to go let you prepare and be awesome. Thanks all everyone right. for tuning in and cheers.